Greetings everyone, welcome to our channel. In today's video, we'll be delving into the fascinating world of Kiribati cuisine. We're eager to share insights, flavors, and stories with you, and we genuinely hope this exploration adds a flavorful touch to your day. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the journey. Kiribati cuisine. Kiribati cuisine is rich in seafood and traditional preparations. Here are the top 10 dishes from Kiribati. No Huang Bota. A traditional drink made from fermented coconut sap, offering a mildly alcoholic beverage enjoyed during special occasions. Bota is a traditional alcoholic beverage that originates from the Philippines and is made from the fermented sap of coconut flowers. It's a mildly alcoholic drink that holds cultural significance and is often consumed during special occasions and festivals. The process of making bota involves collecting the sap from the blossoms of coconut trees. Bamboo containers or containers made from other materials are often used to collect this sap. The collected sap undergoes a natural fermentation process, usually facilitated by wild yeast present in the environment or through the addition of a starter culture. This fermentation process can take a few hours to a couple of days, depending on various factors like temperature and the desired alcohol content. Once the fermentation is complete, the resulting liquid is bota. It typically has a mildly sweet taste with a hint of tanginess and carries a low to moderate alcohol content, usually ranging from around 2% to 4%, though this can vary depending on the fermentation process and duration. Number Bobo, a dish made from young coconut flesh, grated and mixed with coconut milk, sugar, and sometimes pandanus or taro leaves. Bobobo is a traditional Filipino dessert made from young coconut flesh, grated and mixed with coconut milk, sugar, and occasionally flavored with pandan or taro leaves. This dessert is known for its creamy and sweet taste, often served chilled. The dish starts with the extraction of the soft white flesh from young coconuts. The flesh is finely grated or shredded, creating a soft texture that blends well with the creamy coconut milk. The coconut milk used in Bobobo gives it a rich and indulgent flavor. Sugar is added to sweeten the mixture to taste. Sometimes pandanus leaves, commonly known as pandan, or taro leaves are incorporated into the dessert. Pandan leaves are used to infuse a unique aroma and subtle flavor, while taro leaves might add a slightly earthy taste to the dish. After the ingredients are mixed thoroughly, the bobobo dessert is typically chilled before serving. The cooling effect enhances its taste and texture, making it a refreshing treat, especially on hot days. Night Tamwariki, coconut crab, considered a delicacy in Kiribati, often prepared by boiling or grilling. The Tamwariki, commonly known as the coconut crab or Burgus latro, is the largest land-living arthropod globally, and it's native to islands in the Indian and Pacific Oceans. It's a fascinating creature with a unique ability to climb trees and crack open coconuts with its powerful pincers. In Kiribati, it's considered a delicacy and holds cultural significance in traditional cuisine. The coconut crab's diet primarily consists of fruits, nuts, and carrion, but it's also known to scavenge and hunt. Due to its scavenging habits, it's often attracted to food scraps around human settlements, making it relatively accessible for harvesting. The harvesting and preparation of temwariki involves certain cultural practices and skills passed down through generations. When prepared for consumption, it's typically boiled or grilled, highlighting its sweet and tender flesh. The taste is often described as a mix of crab and lobster, with a unique flavor profile that varies depending on its diet and habitat. Noah San to 2K, grilled seafood skewers typically made with fish or shrimp and served with a variety of sauces. Tatuque is a delectable dish originating from Tahiti, a part of French Polynesia. It's a popular dish known for its flavorful grilled seafood skewers, usually made with a variety of fresh fish or shrimp. The preparation of tatuque involves marinating the seafood pieces in a blend of local spices and herbs, often including ingredients like garlic, lime or lemon juice, soy sauce, ginger, and sometimes coconut milk for added richness. The marinade helps to infuse the seafood with a tantalizing mix of flavors before it's threaded onto skewers. Once skewered, the seafood is grilled over an open flame or barbecue, imparting a smoky essence and cooking the fish or shrimp to tender perfection. The grilling process enhances the natural flavors of the seafood while adding a delightful charred taste. Nokaste Namwe, baked breadfruit, a staple carbohydrate in Kiribati cuisine, often served alongside seafood or coconut-based dishes. Breadfruit is a starchy tropical fruit commonly found in the Pacific Islands, including Kiribati. 
In Kiribati cuisine, breadfruit holds a significant place as a staple carbohydrate. To prepare Teyinamwe, the breadfruit is typically baked or roasted. Here's a general method for baking breadfruit. Selecting the breadfruit. Choose a ripe breadfruit that feels firm and has a slightly soft texture. Avoid fruits with bruises or blemishes. Preparation. Wash the breadfruit thoroughly under running water. Some cooks might choose to peel the breadfruit, while others prefer to leave the skin on. Cutting and seasoning. Cut slits or score the surface of the breadfruit to allow steam to escape while baking. Some variations include stuffing the cuts with garlic, herbs, or other seasonings to infuse flavors. Baking. Place the prepared breadfruit in an oven preheated to around 375-400 degree F. 190-200 degree C. The baking time varies depending on the size of the fruit. It might take around an hour or longer for larger breadfruits. Checking for doneness. To check if it's done, insert a fork or knife into the breadfruit. It should pierce through easily, indicating that it's cooked all the way through. Serving once baked to Inamwe is usually served hot. It can be enjoyed as a side dish alongside seafood, coconut-based dishes, or other traditional Kiribati meals. Number 5. Kakabuiro, a type of porridge made from mashed bananas and coconut cream, sometimes mixed with other ingredients like taro or breadfruit. Kakabuiro is a traditional dish from the Pacific Islands, particularly from the nation of Kiribati. It's a type of porridge or pudding made primarily from mashed bananas and coconut cream. The bananas are typically overripe, lending a natural sweetness to the dish. The process of making kakabuiro involves mashing ripe bananas into a smooth consistency and then mixing them with coconut cream. Sometimes additional ingredients such as taro, breadfruit, or other local fruits may be added to enhance flavor or texture. The mixture is often cooked slowly over low heat to allow the flavors to meld together and to achieve a thick, creamy consistency. The result is a comforting and flavorful porridge that can be served warm or at room temperature. Kakabuiro is not only a delicious dish, but also holds cultural significance in Kiribati. It's a dish often shared during gatherings, celebrations, or as a way of showcasing traditional cuisine. Number 4. Ibanra, a dish made with pandanus fruit mixed with coconut cream and sugar, creating a sweet dessert. Ibanra is a traditional dessert originating from the islands of Kiribati in the Pacific Ocean. It's a delightful sweet dish made primarily from two main ingredients, pandanus fruit and coconut cream. Pandanus fruit, also known as kenakini or screw pine, is a tropical fruit with a unique, fragrant aroma. It's often used in Pacific Island cuisine for its sweet flavor. The fruit is typically grated or processed to extract its essence, which contributes both flavor and color to the dessert. To prepare ibanra, the pandanus fruit is processed or grated, and its extract is mixed with coconut cream. The mixture is then sweetened with sugar to balance the flavors and achieve the desired level of sweetness. The result is a creamy, fragrant dessert with a tropical taste that's both refreshing and satisfying. Nuthari Takawakawa, grilled or baked parrotfish, a popular and delicious fish in Kiribati, often served with coconut-based sauces. Takawakawa, or parrotfish, is indeed a popular and flavorful fish in Kiribati cuisine. It's commonly prepared in various ways, including grilling or baking, and is often served with coconut-based sauces that complement its taste beautifully. Grilled or baked parrotfish. Ingredients. Parrotfish, fresh and cleaned, ideally with scales removed. Coconut-based sauce, made from coconut milk, garlic, onion, chili, optional for spice, and sometimes a hint of lime or lemon for acidity. Seasonings, salt, pepper, and possibly local spices for additional flavor. Note to Tabukua, a seafood dish made with coconut cream, often featuring fish or shellfish like clams or crab. Tabukua is a traditional Pacific Islander seafood dish that highlights the flavors of the region. It typically consists of fresh seafood cooked in coconut cream, along with a mix of local herbs and spices. The dish can vary in its ingredients and preparation methods based on the specific island or region where it is made. Here's a general overview of how tabukua might be prepared. Ingredients Seafood Fish, clams, crab, or other shellfish The choice depends on availability and preference. Coconut cream Extracted from fresh coconut or canned coconut milk. Herbs and aromatics Often includes ingredients like garlic, onions, ginger, and various local herbs for flavoring. Seasonings Salt, pepper, and sometimes chili peppers for heat. Vegetables Occasionally, vegetables like taro, sweet potato, or yams might be added to complement the seafood. 
No one palusami, a dish made from a mix of coconut cream, taro leaves, onions, and usually some kind of meat or fish, wrapped in banana leaves and cooked in an earth oven. Palusami is a traditional dish from Samoa, a Polynesian island nation known for its rich culinary heritage. This dish is a delightful combination of flavors and textures, prepared using coconut cream, taro leaves, onions, and often includes meat or fish. The ingredients are wrapped in banana leaves, creating a parcel that is then cooked in an earth oven, also known as an umu. The process of making palusami involves several steps. Preparation of ingredients, taro leaves are cleaned thoroughly, and the tougher stems are removed. The leaves are then typically blanched or wilted to soften them before use. Onions are sliced or chopped, and the meat or fish is usually cut into bite-sized pieces. Assembly, the softened taro leaves are laid out flat, forming a base for the dish. On top of the leaves, a layer of coconut cream is spread or poured. Onions are scattered over the coconut cream, followed by the meat or fish pieces. Sometimes additional seasoning or spices might be added according to taste preferences. Wrapping. The ingredients are carefully wrapped within the taro leaves, creating a sealed parcel. Banana leaves are often used to encase the package, providing a natural, moisture-locking wrapper. This parcel is tied securely with twine or banana leaf strips to ensure it holds together during cooking. Cooking in an earth oven, the wrapped palusami parcels are placed in an umu, which is an underground oven heated with hot stones. The parcels are arranged on the hot stones, covered with more banana leaves, and then buried or covered with earth to seal in the heat. The slow cooking process allows the flavors to meld together beautifully, while ensuring the ingredients are tender and infused with the aromatic essence of the banana and taro leaves. These dishes showcase the flavors and culinary traditions of Kiribati, often highlighting the abundant use of coconut, seafood, and local fruits. If you found value, entertainment, or information in our video content, we kindly encourage you to consider subscribing to our channel, as your support not only motivates us to create more engaging content, but also ensures you stay updated with our latest releases and contribute to the growth of our community.